You're going to look out for yourself because nobody else is going to. Mind your business. It's not that hard. We got into a heated argument and she choked me. Welcome to the world of Maryland's female convicts. Get out of my face. Jessup, Maryland, outside of Baltimore. Home to the only prison for the state's female felons. Killers, kidnappers, addicts. They all land here at Maryland Correctional Institution for Women, or MCIW. They never stop coming. Each year, about 1,300 inmates pass through the prison's intake center, where they are strip searched, interviewed, and assigned a place in the system. Many come fresh off the brutal streets of Baltimore, a city just 15 miles north of the prison and one of the most violent in the nation. I've been shot, shot at, you know. It's just crazy. You, got, you go through that, through the game. That's called a game. I put a gun into my face. I never liked that. Thank you, Jesus, that the gun ain't go off. Or I would have been over here for life. At MCIW, these new arrivals will live alongside every type of felon. 900 offenders are housed here. Minimum to maximum security. The highly aggressive with the low risk. All mixed together. the right. Else, cut. Some inmates have more trouble than others adjusting, like Paris Pratt. It's tight. I have had roommates where I had to get them out because I can't. I don't have a lot of patience these days with the foolishness and all of the craziness that people bring to your room. I don't decorate. I haven't decorated this cell because I don't want to feel like this is my home. Paris arrived a year ago and is still struggling to settle in. Some days I wake up good, other days I wake up bad, other days I wake up feeling very homicidal. Though only 25 years old, she will be here for the rest of her life. Abandoned as a teenager, Paris started dealing crack to support herself on the streets. Now, she's been convicted of killing a 16-year-old boy in cold blood. I was convicted of first-degree murder, and I was sentenced to a life sentence plus 25 years with no parole. I've been painted this picture as a monster. Paris was the first woman sentenced to life without parole in Montgomery County, a middle-class suburban area outside of Washington, D.C. I shot, fired two shots. He fell backwards, fell on his back, was laying on the ground, trying to get up, but it's like he couldn't. Police say she thought the boy was a snitch. She claims that it was self-defense. Things got ugly. And when his hand came out of his pocket a little bit, I saw the knife in his hand. So my first instincts, just like anybody else, was to defend myself. Paris is trying hard to keep herself in check behind bars. If she breaks the rules, she'll wind up in segregation or lock. If somebody touches me, I'm definitely going on lock because I'm definitely going to defend myself. Lock is the unit reserved for the highly violent and explosive. Offenders are confined to their cells 23 hours a day. It's the last place inmates want to be. I haven't been on lock, thank God. But because I have an attitude, I do have an attitude. You're going to look out for yourself because you have to, because nobody else is going to. If I stay here and I let somebody stab me in here, I'm stabbed. They're not going to give a damn about what caused it, who did what, or whatever. The first thing I'm going to do is say, oh, OK, you did it, lock her up. It's up to officers like Captain Hannah to keep Paris and other inmates under control. 
In her 20-year career, this wife and mother of three has come across every type of criminal, male and female. She knows that these women are dangerously on the edge. You're working with people who have committed crimes, have the potential to commit more crimes, so that's the danger element. You're working with people who are unstable, um, have a lot of mental health issues, emotional issues, and some people are just not gonna like you just because. This afternoon, Captain Hannah is making rounds on the prison campus, making sure inmates are inside, getting ready for daily count. She's aware of how unpredictable and unstable these women can be, and is careful as she approaches an agitated offender in a nearby building. Nobody wants to help me. I want help. I want somebody to help me. That's what I want. I want to stop banging on the doors and the windows, begging for help, and nobody is helping me. I need help. What's the problem? I don't understand. The inmate might try to reach through the bars in the window and hurt someone. So Captain Hannah must calm her down. Quiet and try to appease me. It's easier to talk them down as long as you keep calm. Eventually, they'll come down. But if you start screaming, hollering, getting excited with them, it's going to blow up proportion, and you won't be able to get control of the situation. There's always a possibility that I could be attacked. Some have tried uh, in the past, so the threat is always there. I don't forget where I am. I remember where I am. I am in prison. <laughs> Inside, inmates are locking down. They're free to be out of their cells for most of the day, but must be back for 2.30 afternoon count. Don't be disrespectful. Like I'm not being disrespectful. Don't be disrespectful like that. Actually, I'm you didn't have to say get out of the place. You didn't have to say that. I don't want to be on You didn't have to say that, though. All right. I'm... <laughs> on a housing unit floor, one officer watches up to 112 inmates with only a radio for backup. They are unarmed so that weapons do not fall into the wrong hands. But that means control is crucial here. <laughs> Building 192 is one of the prison's four main housing units. It's broken into four wings. One of them, D-Wing, houses inmates who have serious anger and behavioral issues. Yeah. I mean, it's just a bunch of chaos. People banging on the door. She wants to kick and bang, scream, and cuss out the police, or cuss out the inmates walking past their door. Whatever, just stuff like that. Inmate Christy Seal has trouble getting along with others. So she lives alone in her 8 by 5 cell. I got an anger issues real bad. And me dealing with my anger issues, I couldn't be somebody's roommate. Christy is serving a five-year sentence for attempting to sell crack. This marks Christy's third trip to the prison. An addiction to crack cocaine keeps bringing her back. I can't stop getting high. It's just, I guess it's a mind over matter thing. But Christy is determined to make this her last trip to MCIW. She hopes to earn her high school diploma while behind bars. She's also working hard to get out early. For the first time, a family is waiting for her on the outside. All my life, I've never had my mother. Now I'm 33 years old, and now my mother's decided at 51 years old, she wants to decide to be a mother to me. She's decided she don't want the drugs. She wants a life with being around me and my sister. Christy hopes if she behaves herself, she can make parole and leave prison in two years instead of five. To do that, she can't go off on inmates in the prison's general population. If I can't deal with people in population, how am I going to deal with people in society? To help keep calm, she turns to her inmate girlfriend. But that means breaking the rules. She's like my soulmate. I mean, we're so much alike, but we're so different, too. And it's like, we just belong together. The prison doesn't allow for relationships, since they often lead to conflict. And the last thing Christy needs is any more trouble. Across the prison campus, inmate Jill Newland is a first-timer to the prison. Hers is not a typical criminal background, and this place makes her anxious. I just didn't know what I was coming into. It was the unknown. It was really scary. 
You are mixed in with lifers, you're mixed in with all different people. The 34-year-old grew up in a middle-class suburb of Baltimore, attended college, and led a comfortable life until she got hooked on painkillers. It just escalated. I ran out of prescription medication, so I went to other things. I started experimenting with heroin, uh, cocaine, things like that. Jill soon found herself disappearing for days into Baltimore drug houses. People were dealing drugs out of the house, constantly people in and out, in and out, probably up to 60 to 70 people in the house at a time. It's just crazy where drugs lead you. She eventually turned to crime to support her habit. Convicted of first degree burglary, Jill got an eight year sentence, but was put on probation. She violated her probation and is now doing hard time. Prison is tough enough for first timers, but for Jill, it's proving even harder. She was three months pregnant when coming to prison, but then found out she is having twins when she arrived. I didn't know I was having twins, so I got down here. So it was a joyful occasion, then it was sad. Um, the girl we're gonna name Savannah Hope, and um, the boy is gonna be Jacob. Jill already has a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son, both of whom live with her husband. My two at home, I don't really talk about that much. It's like a sore subject because it's I sit there and it's it's hard to deal with. You know, one day I was there, the next day I'm gone. Um, I really wasn't being a good mom because a good mom doesn't get high. In this prison, pregnant inmates are treated like everyone else. I thought like they'd have a whole little pregnancy area and like, you know, just I thought it would be different. Not where you be mixed in with general population. I was nervous about that at first because I was thinking if there was a fight, you know, it's very easy for me to, you know, get bumped into anything could happen. And yeah, that scared me. I mean, you have to watch yourself. Because she is carrying twins, Jill's pregnancy is considered high risk. Twins are often premature, and her past drug use could compromise the baby's health. As her due date nears, the prison has confined Jill to the infirmary, a small wing separate from the main housing units. Security cameras monitor these women 24-7 in case something goes wrong. I'm really concerned about their health. I mean, I think their health is good, but it's still scary because you don't know. I mean, I won't know until the babies are born. As it's getting closer, it's getting worse. But I can't do anything about it, so I've just tried to deal with it. I have to take it one day at a time and just hope for the best. But Jill will have to deal with far more than she expects in the days to come. MCIW, the only women's state prison in Maryland. Some inmates stay only a few months. Others remain for life. The number of women behind bars is climbing at a rate nearly twice as fast as that for men. There are more women now that are committing crimes that, um, which leads to incarceration. Anywhere from prostitution to drug charges, murder charges, theft, just as volatile as male crimes. It is 10 a.m. Friday morning. Captain Hannah meets with a group of inmates. She knows that some of these women may be headed for trouble if they make the wrong friends. Women come in here, you're emotionally unstable. You develop these relationships with other women who are emotionally unstable, and it doesn't work out. Please try not to get caught up into any of the foolishness here. You give you Captain Hannah brain. even tries to drive home the message by sharing her own past. Sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, I've been through it all myself, but you can change. It could have been